Welcome back to Dominic Medici Art Academy. It's day 13, part three of doing a gradient scale. In parts one and two, we broke down the gradient into some simple steps. And in today's lesson, we refine that process to create a smooth gradient. All right, let's jump right into it. Okay, so the very first thing I notice when I'm sitting here in front of the drawing is that it doesn't look as bad as I thought it did yesterday. And this is an interesting part of we'll start to notice when we work, which is this idea that we're so involved in the moment we're creating it. And we don't necessarily give ourselves enough credit that in fact, we're probably a little closer than we think we are. But when we give it a rest, turn it, turn it away for a day. And in this case, like I left the studio, I'm coming back, I'm seeing it with fresh eyes. And I'm, you know, pleasantly surprised that it's not as bad as I thought. So that's one of the, the key things to do, especially when we're getting frustrated. And especially as these lessons begin to get more and more challenging, those little breaks in between each lesson become essential, right? totally needed. Okay. So that was nice. That was a little relief. And now the second thing I notice is something that I saw yesterday, which is that, right, we have these little bands at the center of each of the values, which makes sense. It's kind of those, those were the places we started from. And what's obvious is that there's still some light uh, banding between the uh, midpoint on the value and the next midpoint. And that makes sense because that was that the gradating that we're doing. We only gradated from one edge and we need to kind of fill and refine. So that's what today's lesson is all about. And we'll find this, especially in more complicated work where we have like multiple objects that maybe we spend a couple sessions just blocking in which is sort of what we did yesterday. And, you know, but it's not the f refinement pass. That's a whole step into itself. And think about it, that's why is that important? Well, because these refinement passes, we would only do them if we're feeling good about our block in, if we're feeling good about those earlier steps. If we need to correct them, well, it's much easier to correct at a more basic development than it is when something is super refined. We'll talk a lot more about that over the coming, coming lessons, coming months, coming years, which I hope you stick around for. Okay, so let's, uh, same as yesterday and the day before, let's start in the dark, let's work towards the light it's a little bit easier working in the dark because things are always a little bit more fuzzy. So it helps us get our bearings, you know, uh, in the light, we have to be so much more careful, right? Every mark is shows up and right. We want to kind of warm up before we get there. So let's do it. Now the 11, how does that look for us? I think we're looking pretty decent over here. There might be a little bit, of filling in we can do to kind of clean this out. And then something we started yesterday was this idea of just cleaning up the edges just so that we're kind of taking this to the next step, right? A level of refinement over yesterday. Not that everything always has to be tidy. That's really not the idea. but we are developing skills. And from that point of view, we want to keep these processes nice and clean. Okay. 
Also, when we erase along the edge, we can see if we're creating light edges, which we might end up doing unintentionally. Okay, that's looking not too bad. All right, let's see here. So a little bit, just a little bit of filling in some select places. Okay, that's looking good. So from the center of 11 to the center of 10, we want to see that gradient nicely fading out. So same thing, right? Everything from the center of 10 to 11 was at least 10. So there can't be bits that are lighter. So we can see a little bit of light area here. Let's do a couple of light passes just to even it up. It's very interesting, you know, it's a, uh, it stands out, right? That light area really stood out. And with just a couple of passes uh, across, all of a sudden it groups with the bigger area. It no longer stands out. But then we notice a different area standing out. So this is part of the refinement process, which is that we go from the most obvious thing to the next obvious thing, right? This is the refinement process. We only see the things that we kind of stand out the most. But the more we take care of those, then more subtle things stand out. Right, and when we deal with those, then we see other things. Like now I'm beginning to see this little bit of blotching. So the first thing I want to do is just make sure that there's no light bits around that blotch. And then if need be, we can also just lightly lightly tap out a blotch with a kneaded eraser and then that helps it disappear again. All right, so that's kind of nice. That 10 to 11 is beginning to work a lot better. Now at the real dark parts, right, uh, we do get a little bit of the graphite reflecting back at us. It begins to get a little shiny so this is why it's good to use the softer pencils rather than say like an HB, which, you know, a harder pencil in an area like this will really reflect a lot. Um, there's other techniques we can use to achieve very dark darks, but we're keeping it really simple just using these pencils alone. Okay. Now we look from the center of the 10 to the center of the 11. I'm just looking at the whole like whole area between these two, right? And just to be very clear, just so that it's right, super clear, this is where the nine is, right? This is the square of the nine or the rectangle. This is the rectangle of the 10. We still have these marks in place. However, the only part of the nine that is truly nine is right through the center because to the left of it, we have to be getting lighter. Once we approach this line, then we're getting closer to the eight, right? So only at the center are we at truly nine. So, which means from nine to the center of nine to 10 again, it's at least nine and uh, we can just check the rectangle above, make sure that it's making sense look for any light areas, dark areas to even it up. So right, this immediately jumps out for me, this light area through here. So I'm going to take my 4B and just selectively fill it in. When we're filling in, it's a similar thing that we do when we repair something. Say you have to erase and you have to do a repair, well, you don't want to be going over the edge because then we're making this area darker. We're reinforcing the problem. So we are very selectively 
filling in only up to that line. And the resulting effect should be that it just disappears. It becomes one with it. Right? So that's the idea here. Now, then I just look around and just notice, are there any other light spots showing up? There's little bits here and there. A little bit of light along the top edge. Okay, that's looking decent, looking decent, but I definitely noticed this band at 10 and it's the same thing at nine. So I need to gradate out the 10 a little more, a little more selectively. So same idea with patching, fixing a patch. Kind of want to do something similar with the gradating where we just selectively, carefully lay it in so that we're feathering out that edge. Now, we may also, again, have a little bit of light on this side, which is throwing us off, right? So in the refinement stage, we're working on both sides of these little bands that we see. Whereas in yesterday's class, we were only working on the one side. Right? And do you remember we were talking about this idea of resisting the urge to correct? Well, this is the point where we begin to make those corrections. Okay, so it's beginning to, that edge is beginning to disappear. We're beginning to see this gradient be more continuous. Now I'm going to dab out a little bit because I do see a little bit of um, blemishing here or a little bit of blotches. So we'll just lose a couple of those. You may occasionally want to blow the drawing like that because sometimes there's dust that builds up that appears to, um, it looks a little darker than it might seem and is not actually binding to the paper. All right, so very selectively lifting any blemishes. You can see that you could have a real field day with, uh, with this process. And it's fun, right? It's, uh, again, right? So any, it's, it's like a meditation. And the deeper you go into it, uh, the more enjoyable it becomes. Okay, I think we're looking good now from 11 through 10, almost up to nine. There's a little bit of something happening here. So this is the first, we're doing our first pass, our first refinement pass. We may need to do a second one, but we'll see if it works and it really holds up well and it's matching this level of finish, then we'll leave it, right? Uh, like even this scale, I mean, if I spent more time, I could get it looking so much better. But it's just to degrees, right? It's just degrees. And... This is one of the things that we come to appreciate uh, as we're developing this, like how much time do we have? What are we trying to achieve? And so what is a finished result considering that, right? So one of the questions we will often have is like, how do you know when a work is finished? How do you know when to finish? And I always love what my, one of my teachers said that a work never finishes, it just finishes at a good point. And that's kind of nice, right? That's kind of nice. Looking good up till nine. Now, again, we see a little bit of a band at eight. Now, right, everything from the center of eight to nine is at least eight. So if there's anything light in here, I just want to even it up a little bit. 
and right I'm seeing a little bit of a kind of line forming here a little bit of an arc so we'll see let's fill this in first and then assess it again all right so I'm very selectively filling it's surprising how little right how little it takes to to even these things up okay Right, so it's beginning to disappear. It's definitely still the band. I'm getting a little bit of a light banding on the edge as well. That's nice, right? Beginning to disappear. So you could see, you can begin to see how you could literally spend weeks and weeks on this easily, right? Okay, let's see. So that's looking nice. It's beginning to look nice. Right, so very critical to lean back, stand back, begin to notice a little bit of blemishing we're seeing throughout. Okay, not looking too bad. A little more selective filling. All right, it's beginning to disappear. I do think I need to just break up this little bit of a curve we see developing. Oh yeah, that's much better, right? Much more, much more uniform. Okay. Eight's looking good. Eight to nine is looking okay. It's all fairly consistent. Like, don't be surprised if your gradient looks better than your value scale. Like, I'm just seeing like how, how blemished and blotchy my scale is. And it's not surprising, right? Like the, when the first attempt, we're going to be happy. It's going to look great. And then we're kind of doing the same thing again. And so it's not surprising that, you know, we're much more skillful. We're much more perceptive and we see more. So it's not surprising that it looks better, right? We're pushing it further. Uh, our process, right? We're using the similar process, but we're refining it. So totally makes sense. If we did it a third time, it'd be even better, right? So now in this case, right, in the seven, what I did first is eliminate the blemishes. Now, right, we can sometimes do that because then we can just see, okay, what's, what's, uh, what stands out when we remove the blemish? Now it's not too bad, again, we get a little bit of a light band to the left of the center of seven. Seven is looking good. We certainly don't want it lighter than this. If anything, a little darker. So let's fill in very selectively. That's good. All right, nice and even. Okay, six to seven. Not too much of a band, a little bit, but mostly I'm seeing some light patches. So let's even those up. Right, look around the edges. Make sure that you're very consistent with your values from top to bottom. Don't let there be rough, jagged edges where the value is varying, right? Very consistent. All right. Well, a little bit of a light spot here. There we go. So there's a certain way of looking at this as well, which is that I'm not necessarily focusing on this specific point. I'm aware of where I'm drawing, but I'm also aware of the bigger area in context, right? It's a certain way of looking 
It's a sort of soft focus. What's nice about that is it, it really prevents you from, from uh, getting too detailed and also getting too focused in one particular spot. All right, we stay aware of the whole area. Okay, now six to seven. I think maybe we have a little bit of a band in here. So we'll just one more pass. Okay, not too bad. Again, we have a little bit of variation in texture throughout, but it's consistent. So that's what we're aiming for. So from five to six, we see again, a little bit of a band across the five. That looks about the right value. So that means that this wants to get a little darker. So we're coming up to the six. Let's start filling in. So sometimes, you know, a, a dark blemish might in fact be caused by something that's too light next to it, which is why, again, that soft focus is important because then we're looking at the bigger context, right? The bigger context of the whole area. And we can tell, is this something, is this darker blemish, is it just too dark for this area? Or is it that this is too light? You don't know unless you look at the bigger picture. So sometimes it's a bit of both. So in this case, I think we can be a little bit, yep, a little darker up here. You might see that. In this case, it was a little light here, or a little dark here, a little bit light here. So it's evened up and it still reads as a five. So we're looking good. Okay. From five to the center of four to the center of five, right? We have a very distinct kind of band here. Now the four itself, it could actually be a little darker. It looks like it's a little bit on the light side. So let's pop in a little bit of a, again, I'm still using the 2B using it very lightly. Okay, so that looks good. So I don't think we need to get any darker here, but we do need to gradate out from the center of the five, moving towards the four. So we'll do it the same way we did it yesterday. We do a full pass at least to the line. Maybe I'll go a little bit beyond it since we need to feather it to the four. We do have a little bit of light banding here beyond this. Nice. Well, that wasn't too bad. Not too bad at all. All right, let's take a look. So from three to four. Three doesn't look quite solid enough. It looks a little too wispy and airy. So it's not, it's not flat enough. I'm going to go down to the HB at this point. First thing I want to do, everything from three, the center of three to four is at least three. So I definitely want to solidify that a little bit. Right, so nothing in this white box would want to be white at all, at least up to the line, which means we need to be feathering out from that line. Now I know I didn't quite do that on the dark. We could have pushed the dark a little further out. Um, but it works better here, right? And maybe we'll do that in the refinement pass. We'll see. Like the 10, the 10 could come out a little bit more, which would help this big block of dark to read a little bit better. It's a little bit light down here. But again, we'll get to that on the refinement pass right now. 
So three, right in center of three to four. It's such a light touch, right? It's barely touching the surface. Okay, how about two to three? What do we have here? So two, yeah, it's pretty light. It's not too bad. It's a little, little scratchy looking, but uh, we'll even it up a little. And then our three, same thing. It's a bit scratchy. Three could be a little darker, I think, just in general. Two, the darkness is fine. The blemish, the blemishy, rashy looking kind of pencil marks could use a little refining. So first thing, the two, let's just make it a little more solid. So especially in this light area, um, doing this work with the kneaded eraser, uh, removing the blemishes, is, is quite effective. You just have to remember to continuously find clean, clean bits of the kneaded eraser, right? And the simplest way is to stretch it and repoint it Nice. So look, even just doing that goes a long way to cleaning up some of that blotchy feeling in the marks. And, and actually, yeah, it's interesting. It reveals that it's actually a lot more consistent than I thought it was. It was just some of those blotches throwing us off a bit. The two is looking decent. It's looking decent. The three to the four feels a little flat. I feel like we could feather out from the four to the three a little bit more. And when we do that, we probably will be able to do the same thing from the three to the two. Okay, so. Right again, so I'm doing very systematic, just coming up to the center of three with one very light pass to the center of four. It's nice. I think that helps already. All right, so we did a light pass from four to three. Very light. And now I'm going to do another pass from four to the line between three and four. Very selectively, though, because it's pretty decent as it is. Okay, we got a little bit of light again developing behind the band on four. Okay, that's not too bad. Nice gradient developing. Okay, two to three, looking decent. Three is looking okay. I think we can still push the value from four to three a little bit. Nice. Okay. Yeah, see that makes three a little bit more distinct. Now, it could be better. Right, but again, does it work in relation to the whole? It's pretty darn close. Got just a little blemishing here and there. I think we're all right. So the two looks pretty good. We have just a little bit of a line forming between the three center of three and the center of two. So we'll again also just feather that out. So one super duper light pass to the center of two. Okay, nice. That's working. Now 
Now let's go from the center of one to the center of two. Well, which really in this case means let's feather from the center of two to the line and then we'll just push it a little beyond, right? Just a little bit. Okay, so let me take a look at the whole thing. All right, we've done our pass. Well, let's uh, again go back and just at least on this half of the one, right, pure white. It's very hard to get that final gradation here. Very tricky. But that does it. That looks pretty good. Okay, right now, so now I, 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 I lean back, stand back five feet. It would be ideal to stand back five feet. Um, I'll actually do it, or at least a couple feet. You won't see me, but you will be able to hear me. So let's take a look from a distance. So I'm asking myself, where does my attention get drawn to? So this is what will happen, right? If something is super uniform, right? Say for example, like the wall behind here, right? If it's very uniform, you know, you're only gonna notice something if there's something there. So right, like when I was beginning to film these videos, I had to carefully repaint the wall, filling any holes, otherwise they would totally stand out, right? Had to do some spackling, make it nice and even, and then coat it with a flat paint so that nothing stands out, right? It's a similar thing happening in this gradient, right? The actual gradation itself is fairly consistent. We notice the, right, the gradation from th through value, and then it's also, there's a texture. So the texture itself is fairly consistent, but there are areas where some of that texture is a little closer, a little tighter, and also some of the values may be a little darker, a little lighter. And that ends up creating some small areas of blotchiness, right? Or blemishes. So for me, that's what stands out. The other thing that stands out possibly is that my, the darks in my scale could be darker right? Kind of pains me to say that. Uh, if I look at the value scale above and I look at the printout above, I see those darks continuing further, right? And in fact, I, you know, if I really just pay attention, I can actually see the bands in the dark still showing up. So that means I didn't quite get full strength. Now on the light side, possibly even the same thing. Like, you know, I see a little bit of banding in here. I think I probably could do a couple of light passes across that whole thing just to bring out like the values in three, four, five, probably something like that. Definitely, um, definitely bring out nine, eight and seven a bit more. All right, so that's what we're gonna do next. I'm just gonna do some general uh, blends or feathering out across, uh, across it all, right? So right, I'm just very lightly darkening. Really from 10 is where, where, where I saw I needed it. So I'm using that 6B with super light touch, right? Just whatever the pencil's letting down, that's what's coming, that's what's coming off. Not really much in the way of any kind of pressure on the pencil. Right, and, and where I can, I'm filling in, right? Filling in between bands. 
that have developed. You especially might notice light patches along the edges of the drawing. This is very common. And don't underestimate how when you fill those in, it actually makes the rest of the drawing look good because they group up, right? They group up with what's surrounding them. So it makes the effect much better. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Okay. All right, so even just that so far has already slightly, slightly darkened it. All right, okay, what else? We'll keep going. So another light pass. I feel like we really need to do that put all the way down. Just very light, barely touching the surface. Yeah, right, slowly, slowly, it's beginning to work. Yeah, much better. Again, you know, the, uh, in here, I think we're pretty good in general, but just a light, very light pass across five, six, seven. Okay, I'm going to stand back again, take another look. Okay, I think that helped a little bit. I think there's just a tiny little correction to make in seven, seven to six. It just looks like there's a little bit of a edge forming. We could just feather out just a little bit more. All right, so as far as the blotches go, it's just, you don't have to search for them. They will find you. Um, and you just, you know, if you see it, just take it out. That's all you need to do. Just a little dab. Oops. All right, what happens if you dab too hard? Well, we just have to repair it. So just carefully filling in, and there we go. All right, you can sim do something similar on this other edge. Well, in this case, we definitely need some clean kneaded eraser, or clean enough at least. And we can erase to help create that gradation to white. All right, just selectively breaking up the edge on the pencil, and that kind of helps. Okay, so there we are. We have now done our value scale and gradient scale. That's exciting. That's a, it's an accomplishment. We should feel good about that. And well, where does this go next, right? So having done this exercise over the past five days, we now can put it into practice. So uh, month two workshop. That's exactly what we do. We take our value scale and our gradient scale. We br we're going to break down a composition. We're going to identify the values and then we're going to carefully shade in the still life that we've been drawing since the beginning of the class and then sign up for the workshop right away. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Let me know what you think of the videos. It's so important for me right? I'm just like siloed here. I have no idea what you're thinking. If you like them, if they're dead boring, you got to let me know either way. So leave a comment below. Tell me what you're thinking. Sign up for the workshop and I'll see you in the next video.